This is a University of Otago podcast. Hello, everybody. Um, Wing said that I have a lot to say. I hope I haven't got too much to say, but I've, I think I might. So luckily, Judy's in the front there to tell me to shut up. Please, inter please interrupt at any time, but I thought, I thought I might take this opportunity through this presentation to um, give you a bit of an overview of, of distance um, education at our university. We run things a little bit differently from other institutions, and we have, I think, um, fairly focused intentions that vary, that, uh, sorry, that are different, I think, from my experience of, um, or my understandings of what is happening in a lot of other institutions. And we certainly have distance education, we have a strong distance education program, but it is small scale in comparison with, the, with other places. Um, and I think we, we do it in our way, the Otago way. But I think that's, well, that's certainly because it suits our context. And wherever, whatever institution is offering distance education, it has to be formulated and shaped to suit the context. So we do it in our way. So I thought, especially for people who are not familiar with how things happen beyond their own department or their own program, this might help to, to just give you that sort of insight of the whole of institution view. So the University of Otago, as you know, has a strategic direction to 2020 um, plan, visions, goals. Um, and as you know, this statement is up front. An unwavering commitment and ambition as a research research intensive and predominantly campus based institution or university. Of course, you can define um, campus in lots of different ways. Massey has four campuses, three of them are physical ones, and one's a distance one. They call it a campus. So it depends on how you define these things. Um, and there's an imperative. One of the imperatives is excellence in teaching, and it is there where we see this. While, while Otago will remain a predominantly campus-based university, we will continue our commitment to distance learning. So it's there, in blue and white. It's clear. So this is the university statements. When you continue on, there's another statement that makes strong um, claims, or a strong statement about the um, communication and interaction means between students and teachers and teachers and students in the university and courses and all of that kind of thing. The importance of ICTs and other technologies to, uh, to teach with and to explore those, to experiment with them, to work with them, to contribute to those bigger goals of the university. So distance teaching, distance education sits well and clearly, at, uh, well, well within that, and it's explicit. Um, when you look at the overall structure of the university, those claims are borne out in, in this way as well. So there we have the main um, areas, the central organizational framework there. And over on the right there, the right there we have the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academic. Professor Vernon Squire is the person's name. Um, and then when we look at the people and the structures underneath Vernon, you'll find these. And there we have distance. So it is a, a major group, group, very small group, but a, a major section directly under Vernon. So again, it's loud, it's proud, it's there in the university structure. It's explicit. OK. So, just as a reminder, and I, I'm doing this because I know that there are some people here who are not necessarily familiar with some of these details about the university. Many of you are, of course. There's our main campus in Dunedin. So distance, distance um, programs are taught out of those three places in the main. And of course, we have the Auckland Center, which was, used to be used much more often for distance, it's growing again, and 
Invercargill. We might not be teaching any distance programs out of Invercargill, but there are staff based down there who teach into distance programs in the College of Education. Um, I could put arrows all over that country, actually, when I start to think about where staff are based. As I said yesterday, we have somebody coming, Gary Nixon, lives in central Otago, and he and the team teaching the rural um, general practice programs, they, they're scattered throughout, throughout the country. And that's just one example. So they don't, their home is not one of the campuses, those main campuses. So you have people, but the, the programs and the papers are always, and the way the university organizes itself, links the programs and papers to particular campuses out of those main campuses, which can cause problems, but at the same time, is, is a, it's an organizational, it's a way to organize things. Now, we also have a distance education strategy to 2020, and most of you perhaps would not realize that. Using the same terminology, distance education strategy to 2020, and it's actually on display in one of the cabinets. Um, and this is the vision statement that is there. So building on the, um, the university strategy, saying that the distance education program or distance education will contribute to the university's efforts to achieve its goals in a particular way. So let's think about distance education at the university. Just a few facts and figures. Oh, that's strange. Um, maybe I turned it off. Um, these, these are stats I got from planning and funding two days ago. So they send me an updated um, list of details about focusing on distance students, but um, it includes things like total university numbers. So as of 31st of October, these are the details. So we've got 10.4% of the total university popula student population studying by distance. Not bad. We've got lots of qualifications in distance. 85 individual whole qualifications offered. I've got a little squiggle there to say approximately. <laughs> Perhaps my counting isn't correct. These, PG dips, PG certs, masters. Most, many of those masters are professional masters. I like to call them that rather than coursework masters. But that's just my terminology I just made up or I copied it from somewhere. Uh, two undergraduate and two doctorate. In the current prospectus, you'll only see one doctorate, the ED, but the DBA is going to start next year. So it's officially it's been approved, it's in place, but it just wasn't approved in time to be um, in the prospectus. That's the Doctor of Business Administration. 379 papers we have with active enrollments. There are very many, there are more on the books, but these are the ones that planning and funding told me are active. Oops, went back to front lane. We've got myriads of endorsements. So you can do a postgraduate diploma in health sciences endorsed in quite a big long list of things, for example. Lots of endorsements. The majority, oh, what the heck? Oh my goodness, <laughs> how'd that happen? You've just seen all my, all the rubbish that I'm going to talk about. Oh, thank you, thanks Ruth. Um, the majority of our programs, I won't touch this, are in health sciences, um, but we've also got programs across the other um, areas, mostly in the humanities, um, when you think about the other three uh, areas. But commerce is building from almost zero uh, about three years ago to, to a nice handful now. Most, dis most of our distance students are in New Zealand. Um, about 7% of those of um, others are located overseas. Um, I haven't got, I could have told you, but I haven't got the details with me. I didn't put it on here that uh, the numbers are actually uh, students who are actually called, uh, are actually classified as international. It's a bit complicated too, but um, most of our students are not international. There are some, of course, um, but not not a tremendous number. Most of the dis distance courses are taught out of Dunedin, actually, um, but Wellington um, and Christchurch have a tremendous number. Lots 
lots taught out of Christchurch. The um, nursing program, with many, 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 pro many papers and, and programs, and quite high numbers of students too. Okay, so how we organize ourselves. We've got a, a distance education strategy. We also have a distance um, learning advisory board. And it's a committee of the standing committee of Senate. So there's a, a bunch of committees that are part of the standing committee. So it's a committee of Senate. Uh, chaired, convened, convened by uh, Vernon Squire. We have a distance learning office. So the university says we have an office, we have a director, we have an administrator in that office. And our job is to provide strategic leadership, direction, coordination. So we have our own action plan and um, as part of being director of distance learning, I have an ex officio position on lots of the committees, BOGS, BOGS, Board of Graduate Studies, Board of Undergraduate Studies, CALT, which is the, the, the Committee for the Advancement of Learning and Teaching. Um, I'm on Senate as well, and um, so there's a voice there. Hopefully I can voice that voice, but yes, so it's there. And the, you, the university says it must be there. It's made the position an ex officio position. I just think this sort of detail is important to know, that you're not kind of operating in isolation, that the university does support what you do. So the actual doing um, instead of the talking about. Um, you guys do that. I do nothing. I sit in the office and enjoy looking at my computer and reading bogs and bogs papers. You're actually there working with students, designing those courses, getting them out there, teaching, the hard work. And of course in our university things are devolved, so it matched, matches the way things happen. You have the responsibility of uh, the designing, the developing, the implementing, the, the evaluating, the reporting, all of that sort of thing. We have that devolved responsibility and authority. And you are governed in your programs by the very same pro, uh, program rules and regulations that govern the quality assurance and, and mechanisms and whatever for all programs. In some places, distance programs are considered different and they have their own set of um, regulations and rules uh, around uh, a quality assurance. But here, it's all the same. We have fantastic central support from ITS and the library and other places like um, disabilities and places like that. But these two um, parts of the university play an, a, a significant role in helping you do what you need to do. And yes, there are, there are distinct advantages um, in the way we operate, but there are also disadvantages. And, but, but I look at it as, uh, well, there are, in other places where things are very centrally run and um, everything is, uh, where equivalent distance learning offices are big operations where they have the, the editors, the web des uh, designers, all, all the, the machineries there, Everything's there, the library access, the, everything's all in one place. There are lots of advantages to that, but there are lots of disadvantages too. So it's kind of, you know, making, making the best of, or working through the context and the way things operate and working with it in the best way possible. Now, the way we run is in a devolved way. The, dis the major disadvantage of that, I feel, um, are things like this. It's very isolating. So, you know, that department has no idea what's going on in that department. Beavering away, really working hard, sometimes in ignorance, unfortunately. You know, you're putting your toe in the water, you're having a go at these things without any help at all. And you're just making do sometimes. Minimal staff at times, most times. Um, carrying the weight of all sorts of roles and, and you don't know what you don't know, and so it goes on. The sustainability of um, distance learning is one of my key concerns about the whole thing. And when I talk about sustainability, I mean of, you know, workload. Can we carry on the way we are doing, the way we are operating? Um, luckily, our, luckily our um, 
our overall aim isn't to increase numbers necessarily. Of course we want to increase numbers so that we can survive, but our many institutions, that's almost their primary aim, or their primary aim is to go online. That's what they're aiming for. I think we, I think we do say these things in our big plans about you know, um, providing the best quality and learning environment for students and, and pursuing excellence in teaching and opportunities for learning. And I think we do stick to that by having a distance education program that says we are about, you know, reaching out to people and uh, providing particular kinds of programs, um, targeting particular groups of potential students and no expectation that we put everything online Online is probably a way to go because it's using the technologies, um, it aids us in communicating with students and interacting with students, but that's not the end point. The end point is to communicate and, and work with students in the best possible way. So we have lots of programs who put together the hard copy packet, the print pages still and send them out. And that's great because they've decided that's the best way to communicate with their students and engage their students. A lot of people, a lot of groups have mi lots of mix, mixes and matches of things and take, make decisions about what's best for the students rather than working from the first assumption that we will get this online, whatever that means. But keeping up that kind of operation, I think we have to think about it, especially when we have no pool of course develop, uh, designers, for example, or instructional designers to draw on. We don't have um, people who are, perhaps from IT, who are dedicated to working with each department. In um, one part of the health sciences, they've employed people, they've decided there's been a decision, of course, you would know, they, their Moodle is being used. Well, you know, they've had to employ people to support that. Um, but even so, they're few and far between. There's only one on each campus, <laughs> basically. And um, Health Sciences offers most distance programs. Anyway, but keeping, keeping this up, how can we can continue it? Um, I think everybody, uh, I don't know whether it's a, it's a anyway, I think, I think we all work hard to, to tell the world, the university, that we exist because uh, I sometimes think that we are forgotten. Um, my job, I feel, is to, is to assure you that you have a right to, to ask for things that you need because you are providing high quality opportunities for students to learn. And um, just because maybe there aren't many of you in comparison with the rest of the university and the focus is so much on the on-campus face-to-face student, that um, you shouldn't have to make do all the time. Oh, um, I think we fight with that too, that second last dot point, uninformed notions about what distance education is about. Um, luckily, I, en I encounter um, fewer and fewer times when people say, oh, it's the easy way out. You just put everything online and then you can sit back and do nothing for the semester. I have encountered that on a number of occasions, but I'm not hearing it as often. Perhaps things are changing. Um, and the service areas, ITS, library, etc., etc. they have a hard time. <laughs> I'm speaking for you, but you know, having to balance the support that they have to offer for everybody um, with the particular support that distance student needs and the distance educator needs can be hard to, they get spread thinly. Um, I also know we have to sort of keep our eye on the, uh, the distance learning office anyway, uh, on uh, the various policies. And I'm so grateful when people point out to me, what does this policy mean? How can this be right? We found one about fees for extramural students last year. I don't know what that one's about, and it's still in the, they were changing, it's still there. Anyway, <laughs> extramural. We haven't had that for ever. Okay, we've got lots of staff working on um, distance programs, um, just on it as with any programs. 
Um, this is, this is a group of people who are absolutely vital to distance learning. I mean, the general staff, the administrative support that is provided is important for every program, but they shine when distance programs come into play. Um, and we cannot continue without them. In some departments where there are lots of programs um, going on, they hold the whole thing together. Somebody talked about having that one point of contact for students. When you're out there, you know, in the wilds, trying to work out how this compl complex university works, and it's really hard for people who work here and come here every day. And mind about the student who hardly ever gets, you know, to come here, if at all. You need that person. And that, and that um, general staff member is often the administrative coordinator. Actually, in some departments, there's not enough resources to have such a person. Um, but they, um, they really hold it together. Keeping that, those rampant lecturers under control, keeping the materials, the resources, uh, the programs going, uh, schedules, um, giving advice to students. The sort of advice, uh, for example, um, don't worry about that. Ask the lecturer. Don't worry about that. I'll get in contact with that person for you. Or if you contact this person, this will help solve your, your problem. And those are the sorts of things. It's not strictly academic device, it's that advice. It's that kind of hand-holding, guiding, structuring, scaffolding their, their access to the university and their interaction with various people. Um, you might have, you know, the high-flying doctor in your course, but when you put them on a course um, and they are the they are the student in their job every day. They're making important decisions. They are very experienced, important people in their profession. Become the student, it's easy for them to become the child who is very dependent. They don't know. They, they do. And I'm, I apologize to the people who have done the postgraduate <laughs> diploma in tertiary teaching when I was teaching it. But really, you know, staff members, they would come to me saying, please, miss, the dog at my homework with those sorts of questions or those sorts of pleas because it's easy to put yourself into that position and you feel helpless and powerless and of course they are grown-ups they get over it quickly but just, just need that guidance they need that and um, and so the administrative staff do a lot of that work in many departments those roles of academic and general staff blur quite considerably in some places the academic does a whole lot um, the se multiple roles and then we're drawing on these central services and trying to manage those um, and pull them in and um, and they then offer s they I mean we've got examples in this room of people from the library and IT who just go out of their way to help staff uh, and students and students the library IT I, it's really hard to describe, but um, it's, it's incredible. It's hidden. Nobody knows it goes on, I don't think. And we have these multiple ca campuses with different management and resourcing arrangements. So nothing's consistent anywhere you go across the, the institution. It's confusing for us, never mind about for students. OK, I have to skip along quite quickly. Um, so I feel these are our challenges. The sustainability thing. These are from our distance education strategy, by the way. I think they are still they are issues we need to continue working on and thinking about. Ensuring excellence. Um, despite the fact distance programs are considered programs, um, maybe we don't get so much questions from internal, the internal university, because they know there's a knowledge that it's part of um, everything we do in terms of courses and programs. But the questions that come from outside, you know, the, the QR ratings um, thing we went, we were in, at, when that was, the data for that was being collected, I got question after question after question, week after week after week. Can we have the data to demonstrate? Can we have the data to demonstrate? Do you have these facilities? Do you have that? I think, you're not asking these questions about the on-campus programs, are you? No. They seem to be interrogate distance education programs beyond belief for some reason. There's a, a general 
thought, general understanding that distance education perhaps is of a lesser quality, or tends to be, or can be. Maybe echoing some of those thoughts that Som talked about last, uh, yesterday. Um, contributing and connecting. Okay. And um, that focus on how exploring and making sure that we are clear that, that um, we are actually contributing to the university. And the university's aims and visions and achievement of its goals is not going to be as good if we didn't exist. I think this is my last slide. I don't think we, we need, and a lot of this is my personal view, actually, this last bit. We mustn't lose sight of some important underlying facts. That DE is different. Actually, you know, we had a lot of talk about, about how there's such this, this blurring of the online, the blended, the whatever. Um, at the end of the day, there's this premise that the students are not with you. They are not able to come to campus, and that almost dictates, so, well, it dictates so many other things. And whatever means you use, whether, it's, whether you want to call it blended, or whether you want to call it flipped, or whether you want to call it whatever, the fact is, they are not with you. There's a geographical distance, apart from all the other distances. And that brings with it something that is different from, from any other uh, learning situation. And it's not the same as online. Online, actually, when you really think about it, it just focuses on the mode of communication, or the, sorry, the means of communication, or the, the, um, the is it a book? We are going book. I mean, it's the same thing. We are going lecture, maybe. Well, it's not the same as online. It's, it's, there's something more going on. And we are not aiming to replicate something that happens on campus, as if it's somehow better. And some talked about this yesterday. What's the gold standard? Well, you said on campus, learning and teaching was better. It does exemplify a team approach. It naturally demands it. So I've already talk, spoke very sh in a short way about the fact that general staff and academic staff work together. It's, it, it's sort of like a, it, it's not, it doesn't, it's not an artificial thing. It happens because it just needs to happen and people do it. So it's a natural way to, to collaborate. And the focus is on, because of the DE situation, it does actively contribute to the university's vision. And we can't forget the history of the research in distance education. It has a strong history around the world, in this institution and around the world. And um, again, I am alluding to Som's statement yesterday about the newcomers, thinking that they're discovering something new. Well, you know, look beyond the online, the blended, the whatever, and see that there's a wealth of research already done in the distance realm. And um, so, so the distance people are already up to speed with all of that and know and are really in sens sensitive and in touch with those, those needs, the demands of that kind of environment. And so you've got a lot to share, a lot to teach the people who are teaching on campus and have only ever taught on campus. This is my personal little whinge. It is actually a little whinge. Why do we keep t saying we're delivering stuff? Can we ban that word, please? OK, it's a useful word. and. I don't mind them, a modicum of use. But when people say things like, we are delivering learning outcomes, what sense does that make? And we're, you know, we're delivering. It immediately puts us in the position of having something, and we're going to walk over to you, or put it in the post, or do something, and give it to you. There you have it. it sends a, a false message, I think, about what we're really on about. Let's really think about. What's wrong with using the word, we are teaching? It's not, that's teaching defined as, a, as that, you know, that contract you make with your students. You're facilitating learning. You're providing opportunity for them to learn in whatever way makes sense within your context. We're not just delivering stuff. So that's my little whinge. <laughs> but I think it's 
it underpins our approach to distance education. We're not about just getting stuff out there. We're not about um, uh, delivering stuff. We're about making things accessible, uh, providing real opportunities for particular cohorts of students that we have defined because it makes sense in our context. Okay, see, the, the trick is to talk so much that you use up all your time and you don't have any time for questions. So I have to stop there. In fact, I'm already a minute over. Um, but thank you for keeping quiet. <laughs> um, and uh, please, I do invite questions, uh, but perhaps they're going to have to be <laughs> in break time. So thank you, everybody. <laughs>